So Danko, this this house, this 1920s house, is um, we're renovating it to a standard called uh, passive house, which was started in Germany, and it's a it's a standard that helps builders, helps the industry when you're building or renovating a home, create a project that is going it's it's durable, mm -hmm. you know, from moisture, from heat expansion and contraction, from uh, super tight, well insulated uses very little energy compared mm -hmm. to most homes yeah. um yeah. and and so this and it and it comes at a you know there's a lot goes into it but one of the things that that really helps it goes a long way and it's, it's sort of the foundation of a very good envelope is the assemblies that make up this envelope so an envelope or building enclosure is the floors the walls and the roof mm -hmm. and all of these assemblies they all need to connect and be continuous so that all these control layers that we've talked about and we, we know in the industry we've got, so we've got four control layers, um, basic control layers for build for the building enclosure. And, I've all, and I, add a, I added two more to that system we'll talk about in a second. Mm -hmm. But it's important that these, con these control layers are continuous around the whole thing. For Passive House, it's not that they have to have these control layers, it's just that this is the foundation of every good, uh, well-performing, high performance home or any well performing home is is having these control layers and having them in the right order in a good order based on your location and and making sure they're continuous yeah. uninterrupted so our control layers are we've got we got um in it and i think these are the right in the in the right order of importance mm -hmm. you got water mm -hmm. that's number one air and then vapor okay. and then and and heat Heat is the last one. I will throw one in front of all of these with the structural. If you don't hear structural, structural well, that's, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I was going to add two other yeah. control layers, and that's aesthetic. Okay. The house has got to look good. You know, nobody's going to take yeah. care of it if it ain't mm -hmm. pretty. And then uh, fire. Yep. We're yeah. ten feet from a house, or well, twenty feet from a house over here. If you're, you know, in a wooey zone, which is a wildlife uh, urban interface zone, a lot of forest fires. So you have a another. Uh, control you're controlling fire and so these are think these are layers that have been introduced in our projects just because they're they are important as architects we want to design something that people want to take care of our friend joe stebrick says mm -hmm. ugliness is not sustainable mm -hmm. and it's true and that's why we have that uh that other control layer so the control layers here we do have uh, water number one and that's the exterior cladding that's shedding the bulk water so yeah, that's, that's the difference. Line of defense. That's right. Yeah. And that's the very first thing you want to do because the three leading causes of building failure, yeah, water, water, yeah. water, and water, mm -hmm. right? And so we, we shed the water away from the building and then that helps it from rot and other damage that can cause the house to degrade over time. And then you've got your air control layer. Now air can be the big, have the biggest impact. Air control can have the biggest impact on performance, comfort, health, and durability yep. because you keep all the bad air out and the good air in. Mm -hmm. Then you have your vapor control layer, and that's, you know, here we are in the southeast, and we've got a lot of humidity in the summertime. That humidity can get to the surface of the sheathing and find its way in, depending on the temperature inside and outside and whether there's vapor drive and it can move it in. This system, we'll talk about, I'll let you talk about this in a second. We'll get to the other control layers. But that this system allows that m moisture or that vapor to move Through when it's panel, yep. yes when it's appropriate the thermal control layer is the is the the one on the bottom because and it, it goes to the exterior of this sheathing and on this project and ideally that's where it should that where it that's be, where yeah. it would should be yeah. because then it can control the temperature and the con which r results in the control of condensation on the surface of mm -hmm. the sheathing it also controls the expansion and contraction, which also, which helps with the durability of all the materials yep. inside of that layer. Yep. So you yep. got to get the right amount of insulation yep. on yep. there. But if moisture does get to this sheathing, what happens? If it gets in the sheathing, it can dry no, no. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it can dry out. So I mean, it's like wood-based product, and the overlay has decent vapor permeability permeance. Yep. So if it gets wet, depending on what you put on inside and outside, That's so right. if you put some like crazy control vapor entire on each side yeah. won't dry inwards. Yeah, yeah. So you have to dry outwards and vice versa. Right. But yeah. We but, want yeah, we want it to be able to dry yeah, yeah. one dry. the advantage of having the thermal control layer to the outside is that we can we will 
mitigate and sometimes eliminate any moisture from getting to the surface mm -hmm. of this sheathing. So it's always forever protected like a Yeti cooler type of yeah, scenario yeah, that we've, yeah. we've heard in the industry. And that's what we're doing on this project. Uh, when you put cavity insulation in there, it does get on the surface. Mm -hmm. Condensation can happen there. Humidity can get onto the surface. But this can, it drains it. It also, you know, having all this continuous, it doesn't yeah. get into yeah. the seams or the yeah. holes. It will just, this yeah. fills it up. And all of this runs down the building, but it's also vapor open so to allow. So we're talking dry and out, but what kind of insulation you're putting over this? This is a it's an air permeable and a vapor permeable insulation called Stone Wool. Awesome. And it's it's fire resistant. That's our fire control yeah. layer. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, yeah. it it's um we're doing five inch or six inches on the walls here, and then seven mm -hmm. and a half inches on the roof. So the entire thing, and and if you know we have no overhangs right now at this stage we're just at the sheathing stage and we're doing zero overhangs which means zero penetrations through mm -hmm. this continuous these these control layers okay. we're going to build with our th seven inches of stone wool we're going to build our overhangs within the stone wool we'll put our outriggers within the stone wool and let it hang out let it cantilever out and we'll create the same overhang that was on this house originally with awesome. the same profile the historic profile same you know, crown the same molding and trim details, but we're doing it, letting the insulation encapsulate that and continuing the insulation all the way to that eave so that all okay. of our outriggers, which are the two by fours that extend out, they'll be wrapped in insulation as mm -hmm. well. They're mm -hmm. not inside the envelope, but they are going to be in case so that they won't, it won't expand and contract as well. Yeah. So everything's protected. Anyway, so that's our approach. That's our foundation for a good, mm -hmm. well-built home. And yes, with Passive House, we're having to go to six yep. inches, yeah. Yeah. seven and a half on the roof. Not typical for Georgia. In fact, Agreed. pretty sure no other house in Georgia totally will agree. be built this way. But to your point, for me, I would still prefer picking up the insulation a little more permeable and outside so it can yeah. allow the drying stuff to bed because you have all the assembly versus having whatever. That's right. XPS, some yeah, foam plastic really cheap and it doesn't breathe quite that's well. Right. So. That's right. It, this allows, okay, yeah. yes, um, it's very uh, hygrophobic, mm -hmm. meaning that any moisture that does get into it, it dries really well. It, it will evacuate the, the stone wool, uh, especially when there's vapor drive, which is caused by temperature difference on one side versus the other. So like sun causes vapor drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's a, it's a great assembly because the entire assembly has the ability to dry out completely uh, in a very short amount of time, which is what you're looking for. Well, Danko, thanks for coming out to our another one of our cool projects. Uh, and uh, time, my friend. Yeah, man. I this enjoy is, it. It's going to be, it. we're going to be uh, sharing a lot on this channel. I mean, all, all of our, you know, respective channels at Sawhorse, um, LG Squared, uh, Home Performance Workshop, they're going to they're gonna be sharing some things. Corbett Lunsford. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff we're going to be learning on this project and sharing it with everybody. And we'll have links to all those uh, uh, sites below. We'll have information about your product. Um, there is a great um, interactive virtual walkthrough of this project mm -hmm. that we're going to be adding to with these videos. I mean, it's a great process to follow. So anybody that's, that's watching now can just, you know, be sure to follow along. Um, we really appreciate everybody's participation and, and help. And, and we're going to share all the stuff we, you know, learn. I know screwed up all the successes all the failures all that stuff that we're learning along the way yeah. so we can share that with the world and then you know show how we're learning from it and make it because yeah. we're never perfect and we just we want to make a better world so yeah, anyway. everybody does i mean I, yeah. I, I i'm really happy to be today here because this is probably i would say the largest seed project i've seen with the liquor flash all over the place so cool and uh, i'm just curious you guys are going to do on the board or okay yeah. so I, you find out it's real soon. Thing. It's a little bit different. What I mean, real world is real yeah. world, and the STM lab tests are yeah. completely different things. So, yeah, cool. I, I, I'm excited. Thanks, man. <laughs>